Two weeks ago, in our whirlwind tour of music history, we hit the highlight of three vocal pieces from before 1750. Three pieces from the Renaissance and the Baroque eras. This time around, we're going to hit music after 1750, and we'll hear three instrumental pieces. We'll start out with a sonata. In a way, a sonata is a miniature symphony because it's abstract music. It's something in which the form and the structure is of interest and there's no story to be told. Uh, a piano sonata is usually in three different movements. A symphony is in four movements, but still they have a lot in common. So we're going to hear a section of a sonata by Mozart. But for that, we need to head to the room with the pianos. Welcome back to my living room. To investigate this sonata movement by Mozart, I'm going to highlight a few things that you're going to hear in it. Now, to begin with, this is a fairly short movement. It takes about two and a half minutes. An average movement from a sonata is more like five to ten minutes, maybe even longer. And all uh, sonata form movements would be in three parts, and this is a good example. The very first part is called the exposition because that's where the themes, the tunes, the melodies, the ideas of the sonata are introduced or exposed. And in this exposition, you'll hear to begin with. That is the first theme, the very first thing that you hear. Right after that, it will go into what we call a transition. Something that's going to sound a little flashier. And it's not as much a tune that you could hum or, or sing as something that just leads us into the second theme. So here's the first theme. And the second theme goes like this. Right after that comes another very rapid passage, which we call the closing. And so on. Anyway, I will have the um, letters show those in on the screen as they go past, and that will help you keep track of what's happening in the exposition, the first minute or so. After that comes the development. The development is the middle third, or in this sonata it's a little less than a third, it's about half a minute, and it's where the composer does whatever he wants to with some of the ideas that he introduced in the exposition. It's kind of a free-for-all. Uh, so a composer like Beethoven usually went hog-wild with this. Uh, Mozart kept his um, developments a little shorter usually. Then finally there is the recapitulation or repeat, where we come back to the same ideas. And they aren't exactly the same as they were before. There's some subtleties that I won't go into here. Uh, if this were a formal uh, course in studying music, and we would do that. But just be, expect to see, to hear the same four items that I pointed out, and the lettering on the screen should show those. So then, here is the Sonata, Sonata in C by Mozart.
is our sonata movement. The whole sonata would have two more sections separated by pauses, a slow one and then another fast one, and that's typical for a sonata. What was this music for? Well, it was not for dancing. It was not for background listening. It was not to introduce a musical drama or anything like that. It was itself the drama. And what was the story? The story was nothing more than the music. It didn't have any, any underlying meaning. It was a pattern of melodies and chords and figures that came to be appreciated for its own sake. And that was the innovation of the classical era and something that Mozart advanced and that Beethoven really capitalized on just shortly thereafter. Next, we're going to go to the early Romantic era and a demonstration of virtuosity, demonstration of the amazing technical, physical brilliance of an instrumentalist, in this case, a violinist, playing very rapid and very complex music. This piece is written by Niccolo Paganini, who was the first of these virtuosos in fact, he was so good on the violin that a lot of people in the audiences suspected that he must have sold his soul to the devil he could play so well. Well, there are a lot of modern violinists, including this young American female that you'll see in this recording, who seem to do quite well at repeating this accomplishment of Paganini. So this is a caprice by Paganini for solo violin without any accompaniment. Niccolò Paganini, Capriccio Sol Minore. For our last piece, we're going to hear an orchestral work, but this is one from the early 20th century, a piece that was controversial when it was first written and is still somewhat controversial because it is so abstract and to the ears of most people, it just sounds really weird. It is by the Austrian composer Anton von Webern, and it is very, uh, well, some people call it pointillistic because it's so many individual notes spread over the texture. Um, many modern musicians find it intellectually stimulating. Others find it simply puzzling. Uh, anyway, it's, a, it's a, a glimpse at some of the type of musical art that was produced in the 20th century and is still being written now. Perhaps it has its counterpart in some of the puzzling works of art you would see at an art museum.
Well, that's our little tour of more recent music, looking at instrumental music. So now you can go to the assignment sheet and the sound files that are connected with that. There are four sound files. They are the four movements of a symphony by Joseph Haydn. Now they were meant to go together in a concert. They would be played one right after the other with very short pauses in between. And the assignment will help lead you through those four. I hope you enjoy them. I have always considered Haydn to have the, the perfect combination of intellectual stimulation, structure and style, and also music that is just pleasant to listen to.